welcome to the launch of the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. We think that this is an exciting resource that many church members and non-Adventists will all want to use. You may hear that and say, an, encycl an encyclopedia, exciting? Well, it can be when it records the way that God has worked in the life of his people. And that's what the new Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists does. Now, some of you will remember that there is an old Seventh-day Adventist encyclopedia and may be wondering, why did we need a new one? Well, the answer is simple, that the old one was really out of date. Uh, it was first written in the late 1950s, and it still reflects a world that no longer exists, a world dominated by uh, Western countries, North America, and by the churches in those countries. Today's church is much more globally dispersed. It's strong all around the world. And indeed, the old heartlands of North America and Europe and Australia now only have a small minority of church members because of the extraordinary growth in Latin America, in Africa, and in Asia. And the new encyclopedia does justice to that truly global church, a church in which worldwide mission was not just an aspiration, it has become a reality. The other reason that we needed a new encyclopedia was in order to reflect the most up-to-date standards of scholarship. And you'll be hearing in a little bit from my colleague, Dr. Dragoslava Sandrak, about how the new encyclopedia meets very high standards. It makes it authoritative. We believe that you will want to read this encyclopedia, <laughs> or at least dip in and out of it and search it for its content because of the stories, but also because of the authoritative nature of the scholarship, so that it's something that can be shared with people who are not members of our church. Indeed, we believe that this is a resource that can be a support for evangelism. As people hear about Seventh-day Adventists and say, what are they? Who are they? What do these people believe? Where do they come from? The encyclopedia will show them, and the encyclopedia will give them a, a scholarly, and as we say, authoritative account, one that tells the truth, that isn't just sugarcoating, but ultimately is faith-affirming and can lead non-Adventists and Seventh-day Adventists too into a greater understanding of how, that this is God's church, that God is blessing it and is leading it. That's why we think the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists is very, very exciting. And over the next 25 minutes or so, we're going to be sharing with you some more reasons why you should be interested in the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. It's not just for scholars, for historians, for academics. It is for everyone and for anyone. And you'll be hearing from some church leaders about how they find the encyclopedia, the ESDA as we call it, exciting, and also uh, how they feel it can be a blessing. We've seen in this project God's blessings, very rich blessings, and we want therefore to begin by acknowledging that and also by welcoming God's presence to this launch. And so I'm going to turn to my colleague, Dr. Ella Simmons, who is a general vice president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and has been very personally involved in this project. She's written several articles uh, and has been part of the committees that have overseen the encyclopedia. So Ella, please, will you invite God's presence with us? Thank you, David, for that introduction. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we come to you in joy and gratitude for the miraculous ways in which you have guided in the conception and establishment of the new Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. Lord, we thank you for seeing this effort through to this inaugural day. In your word, you have called us to remember the days of old and to consider the years of many generations. Lord, we have attempted to do this. Under the Holy Spirit's leading, teaching and prompting these articles will immortalize the stories of how your grace has helped many through 
your faithful servants as they have faced and overcome challenges in their lives. These articles will chronicle the providential development of the organizations and institutions you have raised up through your church. Long ago, the psalmist brought attention to the things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us that we should not hide them from our children. Lord, we are offering this publication in response. We are urged to tell the coming generation of your glorious deeds, of your might, and the wonders that you have done. Gracious Father, we trust that we have been faithful in initiating this work, and we pray that as we continue to build the encyclopedia, that your hand will see it through each stage of development. Lord, we pray for your unending blessings on this work and your protection of every word that flows from it, that they will draw and anchor souls in your kingdom. Today, we celebrate through worship, reflection, and anticipation of a rewarding future for the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Simmons, for blessing us. You know, this has been a global church project, and in a few minutes, we will be hearing from more world church leaders, including the world president, Elder Ted Wilson. But we have also had support from presidents in all the world divisions, because this is a global project. And without the efforts of editors and authors right around the world and church leaders, this encyclopedia would not have got to this stage. So let's turn now and hear from the leaders in the church's world divisions about why the encyclopedia matters. There is so much truth to the statement by Ellen White when she says that we don't need to worry about the future as long as we remember how God has led us in the past. This project, this encyclopedia, especially being placed online as it is, will have a great impact in strengthening the faith of God's people in this part of the world, reminding them how step by step in the past, as they read the stories, as they look at the testimonies, how God has led His church in the past. And as they face challenges in the future, they will know that that same God is with them. The importance of this project for the Mena Union is very simple. We have been operating as a church in the Middle East and North Africa for more than 100 years, but so few people really know that we're here and that we exist and anything about our history. By having this encyclopedia, when we meet with public officials, community leaders, we will have an easy reference point to point to to show that we are here, that we've been here, and that we want to touch our community with God's love. It is important to understand how God has led His church in the past. The ESDA contains useful and detailed information on the history of how churches and institutions in our region started and developed under various difficult circumstances. I believe this information will not only broaden the knowledge of pastors and fellow believers, but will also help them to know how they can serve for God's church. We all owe a huge debt of gratitude to those who have gone before us and pioneered the work of God in so many areas. Reading the encyclopedia will not only inform with researched history, but it will also inspire you to continue to serve in the footsteps of those who have sacrificed so much to create the dynamic church that we have today in the South Pacific. One of the lesser known parts of our church's history is the development of the work among the African American community, which today is a very important thing for Adventists to understand. The Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists will help share this important and vital part of our past. This ESDA also record countless stories and testimony on how God has led His people throughout the past. And this will give us inspiration, assurance, 
in the future that the Lord will continue to lead His church and lead us throughout the future as well. In this new encyclopedia, there is a lot of moving stories. For me, personally, there are stories about the Seventh-day Adventist Church spread in Siberia and Far East region of Russia. We have a large number of Adventists who know doctrines, but uh, they still do not know how the church developed. Can we imagine the Adventist? They do not know about William Miller and Joseph Bates. Though this encyclopedia, that we hope that our members become acquainted with the encyclopedia as they go through with the rich heritage that we have in Southern Asia Division. The story of the, of the encyclopedia has moved us and even surprised us in the way that uh, there are new ideas, new uh, uh, situations that came in so that uh, you know, we could know the total experience of the past and we can also adapt ourselves for this present time. The new encyclopedia is a new tool for the pastors, the members at the Inter-American Division. One of the benefits that they, we will find in it is uh, to tell us who we are, where we come from, and where we are heading. We have just one mission that uh, we are doing. We are preparing the way for the coming of Jesus Christ. I believe the big picture here is Adventist mission an identity. I think to relate these stories in such a powerful way, the way God has led and the way his people have partnered with his mission, with his activities, gives a mighty witness of God's leading within our local communities as well as the world church. When we read many of those stories, we see how the pioneers and many believers that came before us had to commit themselves, how they went through difficulties, sacrifices that helped them grow stronger in faith. There will be no development of the church without mission, without commitment. And this is what we need today. I believe that many of these stories will inspire our young people to do the same, to go, to face difficulties, becoming stronger in their face and being victorious. I think our members will benefit a lot from reading the encyclopedia. For a good example, I see young people wanting to know how the work started in their own territory or in our own territory here. When they go to the encyclopedia, which will be online, which is another advantage, they will then see who did what at what time and church history will become something that's so meaningful to our young people and they will get a lot of inspiration from this encyclopedia now when you think about young people this encyclopedia is going to be a real uh, source of inspiration not many young people may know how difficult and how challenging mission work was in the past. And there are some who think mission work is easy. Uh, it is an easy undertaking, but this encyclopedia might give them uh, information of how many people uh, suffered in the new mission frontiers. The contents of the encyclopedia will also offer extensive reference material, which can be used as inspiring sermons and seminars for the church. But mainly, they will be able to know and learn how the pioneers in the church overcame challenges and crises similar to those we face today. That will bring certainty, encouragement, and will help us to keep moving forward without fear, trusting in the miracles God performed in the past and in the blessings that He will continue to multiply in the present and through the eternity that He will give to His faithful children. 
Now, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce someone who needs no introduction, the president of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, our world church leader, Elder Ted Wilson. Elder Wilson, thank you for joining us on this launch program. Privilege to be with you, David, and uh, have a special emphasis on the new encyclopedia. Elder Wilson, I vividly recall uh, a day in late 2014 uh, when you asked me to come and see you. And of course, I wondered, well, what's that about? And the, what it was about was that you asked ASTR to take on um, an in the encyclopedia project. What prompted you and the other officers to do that? Well, the encyclopedia has been around for many years. And actually, it uh, is in printed form. So printed form, of course, in today's world means that it is somewhat antiquated, out of date. Um, fresh material is not entered in. Uh, up to date statistics and expansion of God's uh, precious work here in the Advent movement around the world is not reflected in that. So it was time to do something different. And of course, not only update many of the institutions and the organizations, uh, the names, uh, the familiar names of people from the past and all of that. Uh, some of those uh, don't need too much updating, but the institutions and the onward going work of the Lord needs to be up to date so that church members can can read and understand and see what God is doing as we prepare for the Lord's soon return. So the encyclopedia, an updated version, was really essential after so many years of simply having a printed volume. And in fact, the, uh, the, the first edition of the old SDA encyclopedia launched at the 1966 uh, General Conference session. Uh, and the church then was was rather different to the church today, uh, and praise the Lord for that, because of course the growth that we've had is uh, is remarkable. But the character of the church has changed, and that was one of the things that excited us about the chance to to revise it. Now you rightly referred to some of the names of the past. Um, you yourself are an interesting part of Adventist history. Um, I remember you preaching a sermon once, I think a great grandparent who had heard Ellen White preach and was converted. Um, and a father and a grandfather who were both division presidents. Um, as you look back, how do you, with that very interesting perspective of being as it were part of the, the history of the church, what do you see as the value of history for a movement that is looking forward to the future? Well, uh, let's just take, for example, Scripture. Scripture is full of history. In fact, I believe very firmly that uh, Scripture uh, is an accurate depiction of historical events. Uh, some Critical scholars would disagree with that and say, well, it's only allegorical. It's uh, some kind of, you know, nice story form that provides for some kind of inspiration. But I believe the Bible has very specific historical information, which has been shown even, even lately from archaeology to be very accurate. So the Bible itself gives us a picture of why history is so important. Uh, it really is to show and track how God's intervention in our lives uh, really makes a huge difference. In fact, it makes an eternal difference. Now, in the spirit of prophecy, we have been uh, very uh, strongly advised that we have nothing to fear for the future unless we forget how God has led us in the past and his teaching in our past history. So... Yes it's very vital that we have accurate information about how God has led the church. Now, in terms of my own personal connection with history and all of that, uh, you know, as you get older, I guess you, you become 
a little more part of history and all of that. But uh, I'm looking forward to the Lord's very soon return. But in doing that, and in the proclamation of the three angels' messages of Revelation 14 and the fourth angel of Revelation 18, calling people out of confusion and Babylon and back to the true worship of God, we need an understanding of how God has led this Advent movement in particular, and certainly the entire Christian uh, movement in the past, but more specifically, the Encyclopedia for, of Seventh-day Adventists focuses on God's immediate, when I say immediate, the past, recent past history, of how he has led in the Seventh-day Adventist movement. And it is a glorious account of how God has intervened in people's lives and in institutions, changed the course of how evangelistic outreach uh, has taken place in many, many different ways. And he is still doing that today. And one of the exciting things about this encyclopedia is that it is primarily, at least initially, going to be online. So it can always be updated. It can be improved. It can be augmented with new statistics. People can find very accurate information about how God is leading. Amen to that. Thank you so much, Elder Wilson. Uh, we're going to come back to you a little later in this program, but thank you for sharing those thoughts and those splendid insights. Praise God. When did Seventh-day Adventists first have contact with the people of Tibet? You might think it was very recently, but actually it was way back in 1916 when an Australian missionary, Francis Allum, who was then working in the western parts of China, had three Tibetan priests come to him and ask him to tell them more about Christianity. Unfortunately, war and other problems and uh, chaos in, in China of those days made it impossible. But nevertheless, we know that as long ago as 1916, God was prompting people in Tibet to find out more about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You can read about that in the article on Francis Allum in the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. And there are many more interesting stories as well reflecting the fact that it has been created by scholars from all around the world. Now, I'm going to turn to my colleague, Dr. Dragoslava Santrak, the managing editor of the encyclopedia, to talk more about how the encyclopedia came into being and why she finds it an exciting project. Dr. Santrak? Thank you, Dr. Trim, for introducing me. Dr. David Trim is not only the director of the Office of Archive Statistics and Research at the General Conference, he is also the editor of the Encyclopedia. The Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, or the ESDA, draws on the expertise of hundreds of scholars, pastors, church administrators, teachers, members, and authors worldwide. About 30 assistant editors and research assistants and 25 consultant editors from all 13 divisions, the Middle East and the North Africa field, and the General Conference have worked on the encyclopedia. This excellent resource would not be possible without their research, commitment, and love for God and His Church. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of them for their invaluable contribution. One of the greatest assets of the new encyclopedia project is the strong support and involvement of the worldwide church. The ESDA project is overseen by the General Conference Office of Archive Statistics and Research in Silver Spring, Maryland, the United States. The ESDA office at the General Conference works closely with the assistant editors in the divisions and the division secretaries who serve as consultant editors. The division editors collaborate with their unions and institutions, seeking their advice and help in finding authors and reviewing articles. The ESDA main office collaborates also with the Ellen G. White Estate and the Biblical Research Institute at the General Conference, Adventist Digital Library, Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies in the Philippines, Andrews University in Michigan, Brazilian White Center, UNAS in Brazil, 
Friedenstahl Adventist University in Germany and Oakwood University in Alabama. On the screen are the photographs of some of our division editors and assistants. You will get to know them, some of them, in the ESDA video podcast that will be available at the official YouTube channel of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the upcoming weeks and months. The goal of each ESDA article is to be primary source-based and representative of the diversity and richness of Adventism. Thanks to its international team, the ESDA includes historical data from the world regions that previously were left out of the encyclopedia. Thus, in the ESDA, we can read, for example, about local missionaries, church leaders, and members who contributed to the development of the Adventist Church in their regions. Readers can also learn about Adventist medical centers, schools, publishing houses, and other institutions in various parts of the world. The advantage of worldwide involvement is that the ESDA authors can collect materials from local church libraries and archives. They can also collect materials from church members, such as letters, photographs, diaries, and conduct interviews with people who know about specific historical events. It would be almost impossible to conduct this kind of research without local knowledge and presence. The ESDA team continues to work on hundreds of new articles that will be added to the encyclopedia after today's launch. We want you to become part of the ESDA team. To learn about how you can contribute to the encyclopedia, visit the Get Involved page at the encyclopedia's website at encyclopedia.adventist.org. The website address again, encyclopedia.adventist.org. Easy to remember, encyclopedia.adventist.org. I'm going to turn now to one of the church's leading biblical scholars, Dr. Arthur Stelle, who has been chair of the editorial board of the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, and thus has an interest in the ESDA that goes beyond his interest as a scholar. But please, Dr. Stelle, talk to us about the value that you see in the encyclopedia for Adventist scholars. Thank you, Dr. Trim. Today is a very significant day for the Seventh-day Adventist scholarship. I would even say a historical day. Today we are witnessing an event that our scholars and researchers were looking for, were waiting for, for more than 40 years. You see, the first Seventh-day Adventist Encyclopedia was published in 1966, and in a less than a decade, it was felt that the church already outgrew the encyclopedia. It did not represent any longer the actual current situation of the church. So a revision was necessary, and it was done in 1975. 45 years have passed since then. Today, the church looks much different. Our church has witnessed an extraordinary growth, not only in membership, but also in its structure, in number and kinds of institutions and agencies. Our church historians had quite a challenging time in finding the necessary data for their research. However, today things have changed. Today we are witnessing not only a launching of a revised encyclopedia of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, but we are witnessing a burst of an electronic encyclopedia of the church, which means that our scholars and researchers will have always access to the current data because the electronic version will make it possible to be updated not once in 45 years, but constantly. As soon as changes take place, they almost immediately will be seen in the new encyclopedia. The significance of it for Adventist scholarship cannot be overestimated. It is really a new day, a new era. It is a day that opens 
new possibilities, new horizons. By the way, not only for scholars, but for all who are interested in research, for all who love the church and would like to learn not only the history, how the work began in different locations, but also the current situation. This new encyclopedia will help us not to forget the way God led us in the past and the way he is leading us today. May the new encyclopedia become a blessing for all of us. Congratulations. Adventist missionaries work in all kinds of places in all kinds of situations. And you may well wonder what happens to Adventist missionaries when war breaks out. Sometimes the church has pulled the missionaries back to a safer country, but at other times they have stayed and remained working. And one example is Alfred and Elizabeth Matter, missionaries to Central Africa. They were working in Ngoma in the Congo when a war of independence broke out and all the Western missionaries left, except for Alfred and Elizabeth Matter. They stayed. And when rebels came, as uh, one of their friends later recorded, he invited them into his house. He hosted and subdued them with kindness. And that is a kind of perfect epitome of what we would like Adventist missionaries to do, to subdue with kindness. You can read about Alfred and Elizabeth Matter in an article in the encyclopedia. But having talked about missions and missionaries, I want to bring in now the General Conference Executive Secretary, Dr. G.T. Ong, who is in charge of mission planning and promotion for the whole worldwide church. Dr. Ong, please tell us the value you see in the encyclopedia for promoting Adventist mission. We are thrilled and excited for the official launching of ESDA. It is a historic moment in the history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, for which we can be proud of. The first purpose of the ESDA is to demonstrate the history of God's leadership in the Advent movement. The ESDA is actually a grand narrative of God's redemptive activities among his remnant people. The ESDA is actually the Acts of the Apostles Redux. It is a story of the exploits of the Holy Spirit in the hearts and minds of men, women, and children. It is a story of Adventist mission. It is a story of church growth. It is a story of victories on the front line of mission. The second purpose of ESDA is to be a valuable tool to advance God's mission on planet Earth. The ESDA provides abundant and authoritative resources on the growth and development of the church. It is online, it is easily accessible, it is user-friendly, it serves those inside and outside of the Adventist faith community. The third purpose of ESDA is to showcase the success of the mission enterprise of the church and at the same time, highlight the challenges still remaining. One may learn from ESDA mission strategies that have been found to be successful in different regions of the church. One may also rediscover the spirit of sacrifice and commitment among the pioneers and missionaries of yesteryear, the unselfish service and indomitable spirit in the far-flung corners of the earth will inspire new generations of missionaries to follow in their footsteps to blaze new trails in mission. The ESDA is a gigantic project. Special tribute goes to Dr. David Trim, the Director of the Office of Archives, Statistics and Research, and for his visionary leadership in spearheading this gigantic project from the very outset. Special recognition also goes to ESDA Managing Editor, Dr. Dragoslava Santrek, 
who brings with her a valuable logistical and motivational skill set to encourage writers and contributors around the world to submit articles to ESDA. Her long suffering has paid off and we salute her for her drive and tenacity. I want to close with a statement from Alan White. In reviewing our past history, having traveled over every step of advance to our present standing, I can say, praise God, as I can see what the Lord has wrought, I'm filled with astonishment and with confidence in God as the leader. We have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and is teaching in our past history. Life Schedules, page 196. May God continue to bless the ministry of ESDA, is my prayer. Thank you very much, Dr. Ng, for taking the time to be with us and for those very kind remarks about the Encyclopedia Project. You know, we're excited we're about this project, about the website finally launching uh, after more than five years' work. The project isn't finished. There are more articles still to be written. And if you would like to get involved and contribute to writing Adventist history, you can email us at encyclopedia at gc.adventist.org. We have more than 2,000 articles. We are ready to launch the website. And I will turn over now again to our World Church President, Elder Ted Wilson, and ask him to officially launch the Encyclopedia website and then to give a prayer of dedication for it. Elder Wilson. Thank you, David. What an exciting time this is. This tremendous project over 2,000 articles already written and many, many more, hundreds more. In fact, perhaps several thousand in the final analysis will be online. But those 2,000 plus articles right now will be online in just a few moments because I want to officially declare the launch of the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. And if I had a button to push where we could launch it, so to speak, I'd do that. By God's grace, this will be a great blessing, not only to Seventh-day Adventists, but to the world field, to many people who will be interested in knowing how God is leading in the Advent movement. Let's pray as we begin the special launch of the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. Dear Father in heaven, you know all things. You understand all things. You have given us indications of how we are to understand and respect the way in which you have intervened in our past. The Bible is an accurate account of how your love and your your intersection with us is so important, not only as a church, but in our personal lives, because each of us are not saved corporately, we are saved individually by our connection with you. And as we look back at our own personal lives and see how you have intervened, as we look back on the church and its history and see how you have intersected with the ongoing proclamation of the gospel message and the three angels messages which have at the very core the righteousness of christ we are thrilled to know that the encyclopedia of seventh day adventists will chronicle the marvelous ways in which you have helped your church advance in its great mission to prepare people for jesus soon coming and so lord we officially launch this encyclopedia. We dedicate it to you. We place it in your hands. Bless each one of us and all those who are writing, the editors and many associates. And we ask that this will all be done, not to the glory of any individual, but to the glory of God. We now place it in your hands, the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists. 
use it to further your work and prepare people for that glorious return of Jesus Christ. In his name, in Christ's name, we ask it. Amen. Thank you, Alder Wilson, and thank you to all of you for watching. Please remember, if you want to find out more about the encyclopedia, you can watch videos at the official Seventh-day Adventist Church YouTube channel. But even better is to go to the ESDA website, encyclopedia.adventist.org. Thank you for watching, and we wish you much enjoyment in your reading.